The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. E Production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm sharing 12 Ableton tips I wish I knew when I was the youngest puppet in the game. The first thing I like to do in a busy Ableton session is get rid of everything I don't need to see. And for me, that starts with this global overview right here, which I like to hide with Command Option O. The next thing I always decide is, well, do I need to see my inputs and outputs, my return tracks, my mixer options, which is usually always on, and my track delay, which I usually leave off. Now down here in the left corner, we have the info view, and this is very handy if you are a beginner, but as you become a little bit more familiar, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn this thing off too. And of course, you guys have always seen me keep all my synths in groups, keep all my drums in groups. You can color them all by just assigning all the clips within one color, and you can very instantly have a quickly colored, organized, and cleaned up session that only shows exactly what you need to see. This next trick that I really love are called instrument racks. If you've ever watched me on this channel before, you know I love Ableton audio effect racks, but it took me a long time to realize instrument racks and what they're good for. For example, we have this snare sample here during the bridge, and I want to replace it, or not replace it, but maybe layer it with something else. So just like any plugin, you can hit Command G, and now it's a rack, and you can right click on here and create another chain. And let's just go find another sample real quick. Go to drums, we'll go to raw hits two, and we'll do claps. And let's drag this one down here. Drag and drop a sample. Hey. So without even having to create another channel, we just layer two samples right on top of each other. And this could stack up as many as you want and you can put as many plugins as you want after each one. As you go, you're gonna have a lot of songs that never get finished, but that doesn't mean that those pieces are not useful. So let's say I wanna take an instrument from my lo-fi sauce demo project. I could just go into here the male vocal sample out of here. In the song that it used to be, it's over here, but I think in my song, I'm gonna put it into the bridge. And the outdoor ambiance. Boom. And we just imported two stems from old songs just by dragging it directly out of the old Ableton session. Do your 808s sound like floppy trash? Are you tired of boring bass lines that just don't hit right? Introducing Disrespectful 808s, the all new collection of 808 bass samples so disrespectful you might just get offended too. Disrespectful 808s is available now only at holoops.com. The next few really important Ableton tips are actually located in the settings. A lot of times I like to use an analyzer like Insight, but when you go and open a plugin, let's say here on your 808 channel like this, it automatically closes your Insight and you can't see what you're doing anymore and you wanna see both at the same time. In the Ableton settings, plugins, you have this very important setting, multiple plugin windows and you want that on. It's off by default, I don't know why, but switch it on and you'll have a much easier time mixing. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to turn on while you're in here is enabling VST2 plugins. A lot of beginners contact me and they say, I just got Ableton and I can't find any of my plugins. Cause for some reason, VST plugins are off by default. Go into your plugins, turn them on, and there's all your plugins. And also if you can't find anything, hold option and click rescan and it'll perform what's called a deep rescan. And that might go in there and find some plugins that you installed that originally Ableton didn't see. The next tip that's really important here inside the Ableton settings is inside the file and folder settings. Create analysis file is on by default and that creates these tiny little ADG files that go next to every single sample, one shot and recording go in and turn off create analysis files because you don't want those annoying ADG files covering your entire computer. But speaking of plugins, Ableton has some of the best Echo plugins, specifically the one called Echo, because not only does it let you sidechain your delays to the dry vocals, it also lets you right click on the mix knob and engage equal loudness, which is really important because as you turn up the wet dry, 
usually your dry vocal starts to disappear. So equal loudness will keep your dry vocal there as you add your delays, which is extremely useful. Last thing that I love to do is create custom keyboard shortcuts. By default, there is no keyboard shortcut to record. So every time I create an Ableton session, I hit Command K to enter keyboard shortcut mode. I click on my record button and hit the letter R. And then you hit Command K again, and you're ready to rock. And you've created a record keyboard shortcut that always works as long as you don't have your caps lock button on because caps lock R will reverse your audio. And lastly, if you have a stack of audio recordings and you're trying to clean them all up at the same time with some fades, you can highlight the whole stack and hit Command Option F on both sides. And that's the quickest way to add a fade to any audio. So there you have it, my top 12 Ableton tips that I wish I knew when I was the youngest puppet in the game. What are your favorite Ableton tips that you learned along the way? Leave it in a comment below and I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.